<sighs> Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. This is Sunday Papers. Read all about it. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. Yeah. So, that's it. Um, trying to think. Update. Oh man, I tell you, this. <laughs> I had a tantrum earlier. I actually had a tantrum. I took Vinny out. Well, he wanted to go out. It was raining. It wasn't like raining hard when I went out. He's just having some dinner. But after probably about five minutes, it started to rain. And it got heavier. And it was windy. And Vinny didn't seem to care at all. Which is weird, because if it had already been raining hard, he probably wouldn't have wanted to even go out. He'd have like put his feet down. He's got he got these little magnets that uh, they they're on the bottom of his feet, but he can switch them on, and they magnetize and draw him to the core of the planet, the core of the Earth, and I can't move him. It's like really he gets stuck to the ground. Earth magnets, I call them, and. That's what he does in that situation. But today, no, 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 he wanted to be outside. And he did a few wheeze. I was getting wet. Wetter and wetter and wetter and wetter. Not in a good way. And he would not do a poo. And I found myself getting angrier. Internally, like, I wanted to shout at him. Which I know is ridiculous, you know, I'm aware of that. But I still wanted to shout at him. <laughs> like, and the idea, shouting at a dog to do a poo, is, it's kind of, a, it's just seriously sad. It's a very, very sad thing to do. And I was trying to figure out, why am I getting so angry? And part of it is because I think, because my neighbour didn't return the brolly. I'm holding on to that. Uh, she borrowed my brolly and then she didn't give it back. Apparently one of her family took it and didn't return it. And it's uh, The thing is, when it's raining, I'm like, okay... I'm getting wet because of the neighbour not returning my brolly. The fact of the matter is it was too windy. Couldn't have used a brolly anyway. That's the truth. But it didn't stop me having a tantrum. And I was getting so angry. It was really, really weird because I'm usually quite a calm person. But in this instance, I was really... Really. <laughs> uh, which is weird because I woke up in a you know, fairly good mood. I was boxing on last night. Which was good. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of really good fights on. But... Uh, <laughs> bless you, Vinny. Don't stare at me. Come on, come up here. We're not going anywhere. We're staying here until I've done this recording. Good boy. Just chill out. Good girl. That's it. Good girl. That's it. Cuddle, cuddle daddy. You don't have to lean on the laptop. <laughs> He's not leaning. So I've got the iPad open because I'm going to be doing... What's... Well, 
It's Sunday Pay Pass. So I'm going to be looking at the Readly app. So I did a recording. How many recordings have I done this week? Hey, my little pumpkin. My little pumpkin. Hey, you okay? You want cuddles? You want my attention? You want daddy's attention? You are so cute. Yes, you are. He's leaning, he's leaning the, the top of his head on my belly and just looking up at me. Oh, you are so beautiful. Are you my beautiful little baby boy? Are you my beautiful little baby boy? So what recordings have I done since last Sunday? Let's have a look. So I did Sunday Papers, which was the 13th of October. It's now the 20th. I did a Monday Boring Objects on the 14th. That was uh, about bikes. Trivia Tuesday on the Tuesday the 15th. Then I did... On the Wednesday... Yeah, on the Wednesday... It was number 1216, Let Me Boy to Sleep, called Unfocused Babble. Doesn't sound like me. Thursday the 17th, Healing Thursday. And Friday the 18th of October, 2024. I did Let Me, a Q&A Friday. And then the 19th of October, I did Let Me Boy to Sleep number 1219, called Online Autism Test. So I've done one every single day this week. That's good, isn't it? Are you proud of me? Are you? Are you? <laughs> what did I do the week before? It sounds like I'm stalling for time, but I'm not. Genuinely, I'm not. So I did Sunday, did Saturday, did Friday, did th thir No, I didn't do Thursday the week before. Wow, I didn't. The Q&A Friday... An update. Oh, okay. So the week before was... Yeah, I did some. I did some, but I, it wasn't quite as... Um, as regular as this week. Ah. Hey, who's my baby? Who's my little baby? Are you my little baby? Oh. Oh. Oh, you little ears. You've got your cutest little ears in the whole wide world. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Cutest little ears in the whole wide world. Vinny, you're lovely. Vinny, you are. Vinny. So beautiful When I look into the sky I see a star But only at night Cause during the day I can't see the stars And you might ask What looking up to the sky And seeing a star Has got to do With you being so beautiful well, it actually has a lot to do with you being so wonderful. And you probably think it's just because it rhymes with ah. Uh, because I said you are, and then I said star. And that was a very lazy rhyme. 
but it might improve given some time. Stop licking that. Vi okay, carry on. Um, I apologise wholeheartedly for whatever that was. So I have the newspapers. Oh yeah, you can if you if you're interested, you can join my Facebook group, which is Jason Newland's Boring Group. Uh, also, I have a YouTube channel where I upload. Each recording, each time I do a recording, I upload ten, blah, 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 a ten-hour version. So that's cool. So let's have a look at the papers. I'm going to go through them. Uh, Daily Mirror. I'm going to miss out the the you know the serious stuff so let's move forward and I've got to skip a few so I'll skip that right the inf okay yes the McRib is back like proper backpack okay so that's a McDonald's advert United one of the this is right let's skip through that there's a lot about a specific story that happened a few days ago and that's been they're really filling it with that oh look Comet's a nice old spectacle so I'm reading this is the Daily Mirror Wait a minute, this is from Saturday. I don't want that, I want the Sunday papers. It's Sunday today, isn't it? What on earth is going on? Sunday. It is Sunday. Right, let's start with the Sunday mail. The Sunday mail. Uh, TV Anita. I'm single and loving it. That's good. Right, what else? Um, anger at taxpayer Hannah for jobs. Right, Swanee calls for the, the. Right, here we go. Ooh. Scherzinger. Nicole Scherzinger has chair raising experience shown off some pussy. Uh, uh, the pussy. I can't mix it. Some dance moves. The pussy cat doll. Um, so I tell you what, she's a good, really good singer. Really good. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, let's go back. Small private faulty towers. Oh, this might be good. The newly departed SMP COO compared himself. To Basil Fawlty at a meeting at SNP members yesterday. Murray Moot said joining the party after his role as a newspaper editor was similar to the hapless hotelier. Try not to mention... Okay. It's just it's a politics thing. Okay, here we go. Um, Christopher... Oh, come on, there's got to be some nice stories somewhere. Beware the pig farmer. Nope. Apparently it's not a nice story. Uh, right. Oh, look at this. Right, bully cat warning. Oh, my goodness. An XL cat. That can't be a real cat. It, 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 um, yeah, it wouldn't look at a place in a horror movie. It's a scary looking thing. Mind you, I think cats, you take the hair off of any cat. They look weird. It's like dogs. If you take a, even, um, like, 
Andre when I used to put him in the bath. And all his fur, because he was quite, quite fluffy fur. When it was just stuck to his body, he, just, he didn't look great. Cat lovers have been warned against buying animals bred to look like banned XL dogs. Experts say they suffer from serious health defects and should be avoided. So, so-called XL cats were created by breeders mixing spinks, I'm sorry, and munchkin cat genes. I don't know why, I just love the word munchkin. So mixing spunks, spunks and munch, munchkin cats, cat genes. So, yeah, um... I mean, isn't that how mixing cats and dogs has been going on for years, isn't it? It's because they can. We can't do it as humans, can we? Otherwise, we would. I mean, technically, we're mixing two different humans together, in a sense. So I guess it is. Yeah, it is. It is, isn't it? But do, don't don't dogs and cats can't they like? Let's say have a big party where there's maybe lots of different dogs all enjoying themselves. Um, and then the doggy gets pregnant and has a baby and and it's kind of a mix of lots of different dogs, not just, so let's say there's an Alsatian and a Corgi. And the Alsatian and the Corgi are both made love to a, I'm trying to think, a St. Bernard. And then the St. Bernard gives birth to a St. Bernard, but also a mix with a Corgi and a Rockweiler. So yeah, that'd be... Axin two child cat would be a winner. Axin the two time the two child cat limit would cut the cost of pair. Did you know? Did you know this is something I found interesting? It is the against it is against the law to send a child to school without breakfast. It's weird that there need to there needs to be a law for something like that. It's it seems like, you know, if there is such a thing as common sense. But it's actually a human rights violation to send a child to school without breakfast. Did you know that? So anyone that actually sends their kid to school without breakfast, and I'm not saying if the kid refuses to eat, that's a different thing altogether. You know, if a kid doesn't want to eat, tough. <laughs> tough on the kid. Stuff them. But, you know, as far as legally, they have to have something to eat. And you know what another bit of the law is? If someone can't afford to feed, then someone else has to feed the kid. It is all of our, our duty... Every adult's duty in this, pretty much most of the world, 197 countries, to make sure that kids eat before going to school. Well, make sure they eat full stop. Make sure they're safe. Make sure they're looked after. Make sure they, they you know, have an education, all that stuff. That's our, our duty. It's in law. So, yeah, it's interesting. So what I'm saying basically is if you don't want to feed your kids, let your neighbour do it. They have to. Because it's law. War, warring Gallagher's kept apart to save world tour. Oh. Liam and Noel stand to make 50 million each from next year's world tour if they can keep the peace. 
I mean, unless they're running out of money, I imagine they've got a few quid in the bank. Okay, who's this? Ward out to well after bottom. What? Oh, okay. Shane Ward. Is that Shane? Oh, because that's a different person. Okay, Shane Ward. Shane Ward from Boy's Own. Isn't it? Shane Ward? Was he in Boy's Own? Oh, I'm not sure. Where's Shane Ward from? It is Boy's Own. Yeah. Shane Ward says his 40th birthday plans are on hold after he narrowly escapes an early strict exit. Now Shane Ward is not 40. He's a lot, he's the same age as me. If it is once, it's not, it's definitely not. Yeah. In fact, he could be older than me. So he's definitely not the, that one that I'm thinking of. Singer and actor Shane, who won the X Factor second series in 2005. Ah, okay. X Factor winner. Cool. Um, I wonder who that was then. Shane. There is a Shane in that band. But Storm Smashley. Emergency teams prayer for damage. Prepare for damage and chaos at 80 miles an hour. Winds blow in from the Atlantic. I'm pretty sure the rest of the world must be laughing at us that we're preparing for 80 miles an hour winds. I mean, it's a lot for us, but other countries, it's just, that's like a breeze to them. God. It has been windy, a little bit. A little bit windy today. Oh, best of Scotland, specially selected pork. That's nice. Another advert. Elton Pins UK. Elton Pins UK Rescue Hope on Starmer. Elton John said he hopes Keir Starmer's labour can rescue Britain from the doldrums. The Rocket Man singer's comment came as he, as the government attempted to woo global investors at a major summit last Monday. Uh, drone to oh here we go here's a, an interesting well is a, a story James May from Top Gear uh, said that his former show Top Gear was very much of its time and suggested a change to the format would be needed to bring it back to TV the BBC rested Top Gear for the Foreseeable future after Andrew Flintoff, da da da. Again, it still has to just do some, do a nice story. Oh, never mind. This is the, the yeah, 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 yeah. this is the Sunday list. It's kind of celebrity stuff. Where is it? Let's have a look. George Lucas and his wife Melody Hodson, Hobson. Welcome daughter Everest in 2013 through surrogacy when Lucas was 93 and now he's 80. He also has three adopted kids. He was 69 when he had George Lucas. I mean, I wonder if they vetted him, see if he could afford to uh, to raise kids, you know. Uh, the plod father, male stars who have kids late in life. Here we go. We have never mind the Godfather. AI Pacino, no Al Pacino, has revealed what it's like to be a dad at the age. Of, <laughs> sorry, what it's like to be a dad at the age of eighty-four. The whole we. Um, He was asked the question, but it unfortunately kept falling asleep whilst trying to, to answer. The Hollywood legend, who had a baby with a 30-year-old ex, nor 
Al Falar last year is 30 year old ex so he's not even with her anymore what is she too old getting too old aging a bit <laughs> she's hit 30 mate now in time for a new model blimey 30 40 50 60 70 80 54 years That's based on that when he was my age, his girlfriend, or his ex-girlfriend, was just being born. Blimey. Nor Alphala last night, last year, has written his autobiography. What? Oh, she's written his autobiography. But Pacino's memory is very much written for his baby son, Roman, and re reveals how much fun it is to be a much older father. Pacino joined a list of male celebrities who have children much later in life. Without... The weird thing about it, right, is they can get away with it because of who they are. So you've got Bernie Ecclestone had his fourth child in 2020 at the grand old age of 89. 89. The former Formula One boss and his wife, Fabiana Flossie, then 44, welcomed a son, Ace. He has three daughters with previous partners. So... Had his fourth child... He was 89 in 2020, so he's, not, he's now over 90. He's, I mean, he, do you, uh, I, um, I, 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 I'm just, I, I, hmm. does he know, <laughs> does he, is, I don't know, just, it's 90, ugh. so he's not now 93 now, it's, It, I, I, I don't know. It just... It seems like it might be a bit weird for the kid. But then if the kid doesn't know any different... Then it's not going to be, is it? But if the... It's just... I don't know. Just It seems a little bit... Just a little bit unfair for the kid. Just in a sense of, let's face it, I'm, I reckon, I don't know, but I imagine it must be pretty groovy. Not for everyone, obviously, because there's been, you know, famous stories about kids of famous people and stuff. But it must be quite groovy to be Al Pacino's child or Robert De Niro's child. Or Ronnie Wood's child, or Rod Stewart, or Billy Joel, or Clint Eastwood, or Ronnie Wood, Robert De Niro. I said all the names of my George Lucas, Elton. J oh. But you know, it's it must be really kind of cool because it's a, just such a different life, and to be with someone that's a hero. You know, Mick Jagger. I mean, he's... Wow. His, his, his oldest kid is 53. 54. His oldest child is 54, Mick Jagger is. And... 
and his youngest is uh, eighth kid in 2016. I thought he had a kid recently. Oh, maybe not. So 16. So his youngest kid's eight. His oldest kid's 54. Quite an age difference. I'm not a big issue. Yeah, I don't have an issue with age difference. It's just, as long as it's legal, I'm not, I don't care. But, I... Just, it must be strange. But then love's love, isn't it? And you think how how close some kids are to their grandparents. So maybe that's a really good time for a father or for a man or, you know, uh, uh, to become a father when they're like granddad age because of all that life experience and but my dad, he's the best granddad in the whole wide world. He's just so full of love for his game, his grandkids. None of those grandkids are my kids, by the way. I don't have any children. Although I've still got this little niggle that there is, there's a child out there somewhere with my genetic DNA, half of my DNA. I do. But it's hard to know. If your mum's name is Michelle. <laughs> dark hair from Manchester. And you were born in 2006. No, 1996, sorry. You may be my child. That's the only information I got. She was a good singer. A very good singer. Let's have a little, a niggle, a little, I think maybe. Yeah, I think she was from Manchester. I don't know. She was Northern anyway. I think definitely Manchester. And, yep. 2000 and, yeah, definitely would have been born in 2006. 1996, not 2006, 1996, which means my child, my son or daughter would be 96, 97, 98, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. Over 20 years old, or over 20, or 38. Whichever way you want to look at it. So, I've not only missed their childhood, I've missed their adulthood. I've missed their, I've missed everything. I mean, they're basically grandparents now. They're nearly as old as me. That doesn't make sense, does it? It's not 38 years, is it? I'll just do it again. 19, I do a shortcut. 90, 96, 2006, 2016, 2026, 20, 26, take off two, take off one, so 2026, take off 10, 2026, so that's 20 years, that's 30 years, 2026, Take off 10, so that's 20 years. And then add 8. So that's, no, add 5. So 2020, 
So it's 25, then add 3. 28. 28 years. Yeah. 28 years old. So I've missed all that time with that child. Well, they're not a child anymore, are they? They're an adult. They might have like an eight, nine-year-old kid. They might have five kids. Especially if they're as virile as I am. <laughs> it's so weird. I've never been virile. <laughs> oh. Wow. So, yeah, I don't know what I've got talking about that. Um... Billy Joel, how old is Billy Joel? Singer welcomed another girl to his family at the age of 68. His fourth wife, Alexis, gave birth to Remy two years after big sister Della in 2015. His first daughter, Alexa, with second wife model Christy Brinkley, is 38. So... You know, Billy Joel used to be a boxer, apparently. My friend was a huge fan of Billy Joel. I, I like him as well, I do. I like listening to his songs. Um, well, I mean, I'm not going to watch him dance, am I? I like... He's really good. I think he's... He reminds me a little bit of... I don't know. It's kind of... He's like Elton John in the sense of... But he writes his own songs. He writes the lyrics. Like Elton John doesn't write the lyrics, but he does do the music and composes the songs out of the lyrics. Which has got to be... That sounds like quite a hard thing to do. I mean, for me, when I was... I used to write songs... It used to be, really, it came from the tune to start with. Um, oh, look. Here's a thing. John Johansson. I'm not super mum, and I'm refusing to feel super guilty about that anymore. Me, 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 me. I had a huge epiphany. Epiphany? Epiphany? Last week, after finally realising this work-life balance is a lie. A big fat one, too. And that doesn't exist. Mim, 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 mim. Okay, right, I can't bother to read the rest of that. Model, behaviour, okay, VD, okay. Pocket Guide steps into venal history. I don't know what that is. A guidebook devoted to Edinburgh's venal steps has been released. It's the first pocketbook guide to the steps in the old town, which have connection from... Again, why did I have to go into, like, horrible stuff? Just, is, is, there, no, is there no nice history? Nice stories from history. Well, can you imagine an alien coming down there and all they've got to kind of realise what this planet is, is just that day's newspapers. For some reason they can read. Um, but nothing else. Everything else is destroyed, but the aliens come down here and like, oh, just to get an idea what was going on in the world and, you know, our history and everything. I don't think they'd want to stay they wouldn't want to stay. Imagine everyone was like all in a big bunker, millions of people in the bunker, and the aliens, you know, we we're all looking through the glass at the aliens. Just let us, can you let us out, please? When I say aliens, not aliens from the movies. Can you let us out, please? Just knocking on the glass. They're looking at these newspapers and thinking, oh, no, I think you can stay there. See ya. Stories cracking up people the money refunds. So, angry passengers or angry. Uh, 
Give your home afar a five star makeover. Here we go. We've got a piece of the jail. Nope. Campaign to end. Nope. So, breaks. You know, the only nice things in the newspaper is adverts. And that's just sad. Isn't it weird? Come on, let's move away from this. There's got to be some nice things. Legal weed smuggling flooding into Britain. Uh -huh. Dope is flooding into the UK from countries where it has been legalised. We're well, still not legal here, is it? Uh -huh. Oh, dear. It's like somehow... It's still not legal to smuggle it. So... If they're given the impression you can go to uh, Thailand, for example, where it's, I think it's currently legal for weed to be smoked and to buy it. Try and smuggle it out of the country and your holiday will be extended <laughs> indefinitely. And that's the best possible <laughs> outcome to wish for. You know, just because they, 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 they've, they're not tolerant at all with stuff like that. They keep changing their mind, though, in Thailand. They, they make rules, and then the suddenly they just, like, we're changing it now. So it's, uh, it takes a while to sort of figure out. Because like, when I was there, I don't, because I don't really indulge in stuff like that. So, anymore. And uh, I, it's just like... I'm not going to do something n like now that six months ago could have got me put in prison for 10 years. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, the rules have changed. I'm going to stick it. So I would definitely steer clear from anything that used to be really serious. A really serious, you're like, no. I'll keep away because what if they change their mind while you're in the middle? You go into the shop, you buy some stuff, and then you, when you come out, the rules have changed, and you're surrounded by cops. Um, a burger and prize, charity workers joy at McDonald's win. Oh, that's a nice story. It's not an advert though, is it? Oh, oh, it could be. McFreebies, Gates and Lowe said to have gold cut. Oh dear. Right. Van, okay, no, rock and roll, re McFly and Busted are ready to rock and roll out the insults. Do you remember when they were McBusted? Do you remember when they got together? Two different bands got together. So, Jeffrey Archer, he's going on. What's he going on about? Jeffrey Archer, Swifties have ruined my local. I've been going for 30 years. I'll show you his, his accent. I've been going for 30 years and had my own table, but I could not get in there for la the last month. Well, it's bad, isn't it? He can get into prison, but he can't get into his own pub. So what's next? Oh, star signs. Should we do, I'm going to do my star signs for each newspaper, see if they're similar. So this is star signs from the Sunday Mail. Virgo, which is me, August the 24th till September the 23rd. A week for looking more deeply into resources and possibly checking out official business review to making everything fit better this week this week may have a crunch point but it has a positive outcome right so let's go out let's go out of that let's go to the next newspaper that's a sunday mail independent i wonder if they have a i don't know if they even have a thing Oops, the Independent's a bit more of a serious newspaper, so I don't know if they have star signs. I don't know. Probably, because they're not tab... Well, they are tabloid, but they're not... Um, they're not really there for fun. 
I was in the independent, you know, yeah, 1993. They called me the worst, Britain's worst comic. But they didn't call me it. They called another person it, but they had my picture. That's when I realised. That's when I realised, I'm famous. I actually was infamous, which is what I always wanted, but for the wrong reason. I wanted to be infamous for being funny, but rude. and said I was just infamous for being not funny which isn't good right i'm going to go to the observer so let's see i'm going to skip through this see if there's a star sign uh, i used to read the observer always liked the observer actually don't know why i just did now is pig changed the world yeah I mean, you see that uh, they wanted to give out Ozempic, Ozempic, which is the weight loss thing to o overweight people so they could get back to work and stuff. It's uh, what are you weird? It's, let's focus on health above all else, everyone's health. Right, doesn't look like they have a star sign, they do have a crossword. But my success with crosswords is limited, to say the least. Right, it's got sport, but no boxing. How can they fill it with so much sport, but no boxing? I don't get it. Oh, uh, well, who's that? Music, Amaria, Amaria. Right, have I done a Daily Mail? Let's do the Daily Star. So this will have, or well, let's see what's the headlines here. Conquergate, we're gentlemen at the World Conquer Championship and we don't cheat. I've been playing and practicing for years and that's how I won. I'm not guilty. So clearly they've been, someone's accused them of cheating and that's it. Okay, I can't bother to read it. I can figure it out just from the headline. Uh, who's on page three? <laughs> they still got page three, girl. But she's in a bikini. And Emily's looking pretty in pink. 25. This is so old, out of date now. This kind of having a model on page three. It's weird that even just... 25 year old from Sussex is bringing the seaside vibes with her barely there bikini so uh, so I don't know right I can't bother to this I don't really watch don't really look at these newspapers normally William, talking about old people, William Shatner plans to spend Christmas in Antarctica for his latest voyage of discovery. In October 2021, no, it was really three years ago that he went into space, aged 90. Doesn't seem like three years ago. For his latest real life adventure, he, I mean, it's not really. I mean, you know, he spent years in space, didn't he? So they make a big deal. Who else would you expect to do stuff like that? He spent his whole life being a, a trays blailer. Wow. This conquer man, I'm cleared to conquer again. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, here we go. Is this an advert? Big names are getting the hots for flogging their own spicy sauces. A host of famous spice lovers have put their names to hot dips and marinades. Among the celebs to jump on the trend is Brooklyn Beckham, whoever that is, who recently made his her debut, debut into the market with her £15 bottle of Cloud 23 in flavours hot habanero and sweet jalapeno. Others include music stars 
Ed Sheeran and his uh, and her source Tingly Ted's and Alice Cooper with Poison Reaper. Retailer Ocado says sales are up 10% year on year. James Nicolian of Some Like It Hot, an online store selling imported and rare versions, said hot sauce is the closest thing to magic. It makes everything better. Um... I don't know. I'm just thinking send it to send it to other countries that need help. There you go. No 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 aid, but you this there's some hot sauce. That makes everything better. I'm Daisy Caned. Daisy Mary Cooper. Daisy May Cooper is back at work. Uh do, do, do. Fan actor Al Pacino was once kidnapped by a female fan. The Godfather star, 84, had got so drunk while out with Gene Hackman's brother, he couldn't remember where he was staying. In his newly released memoir, Sunny Boy, Pacino says, a woman said to me, oh, I'll drive you home. That goes back to what we said earlier. He didn't write it. His ex-girlfriend wrote it. And without a second thought, I got into a car. Even in my days, I could recognize that she was not talking to, taking me back to where I was staying. She said straight out, I'm kidnapping you. It was only when Pacino opened the car door and threatened to jump out that the woman agreed to take him home. Um, I probably would have got out of the car. I probably wouldn't have closed the door again, if I'm honest. TV shows no selector. Lee, society won't allow it. Lee Francis says his telly show, Bo Selector, will never come back because of society. The Channel 4 series saw him send up a range of celebrities... Um, okay, right. Yeah, I mean, it's just this one of those things that. What is it? The, 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 the saying of the other paper? Of its time. Richard Chatham Whitnow. Okay, Shane Pickett's. Um, okay, here's one. Old age, Brave Lawrence. Interior designer Guru Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen had some typically flamboyant tips for improving old age. Be brave and have fun. The changing room star says Britain needs to revolutionise its attitude to growing old to avoid a tsunami of health problems. And the 59-year-old said, Speaking as an old person, it boils down to the fact it is down to us. We need to look after us. Not drink too much, don't smoke, take more exercise and broaden our horizons. If we all did that for ourselves, there would be no tsunami. No government can fix this. Change has to come from within. Well, thank you, thank you, Guru, interior design guru Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. You have transformed my life. Thank you very much. Um, really... We'll fright them on a loose. Ship toilets are haunted by Churchill. <laughs> oh dear. Winston Churchill haunts the women's loos of the Queen Mary liner. Claims a ghost hunter. Singer and... Sp Why? The women's loos. Why would he be in the women's loos? Okay, I've got to read it. I'm sorry, I can't. Not now. I've never wanted to do anything as much as I have read this. I've never been so excited. Can't you tell from my voice. Uh, okay. Blimey. It's 12 minutes past 9. 12 
12 minutes past 9. It's late. I'm in a bit of a late day today. Yeah. Singer and spook expert Brockard saw the wartime PM in the labs of the vessel of the vessel now docked in California as a posh hotel. Okay, so it's docked in the hotel. Okay. Brockard, who was on board for a party, said, I always experience paranormal activity when I least expect it. I opened the bathroom. That's weird. What was going on there? My phone just did a weird thing. I felt... I opened the bathroom door and it was filled with a thick mist. I felt like someone was following me, but when the door slammed behind me, it slammed twice, like someone followed me in. She added, I saw the full apparition of a heavy set man with a cigar. He looked exactly like Winston Churchill. It was the quickest bathroom visit I've ever made. So you stayed. <laughs> I wouldn't even wipe. I'd be out of there. <laughs> it's like, no, I'll be gone. I would never return. It's, it is a dad joke. This is it. Okay. My car broke down between a marina and a Clinton's shop. Now I'm stuck between a dock and a card place. See, I don't... I find that a bit annoying and a bit disrespectful. The idea that someone, a male, just because he's a father, would just come out with really crap jokes like that. Like, just... It's, it's disrespectful towards men. Stop it. It's just a joke's a joke, and that... I mean, it might be a funny joke. I, I didn't, I couldn't really see, but the the idea that dad jokes. I remember. Oh, I had this job in two thousand thirteen in a call center, and I was one of the oldest again. Blimey, I was forty, forty three. I think forty three. Yeah, probably forty three, forty two, forty three. And I was in there, and there was quite a few people like in their early twenties. So I was, you know, I was double their age, I guess. That's so quite old for them. And I said something, and one of the the girls that was working there, who was in my team, said, "Oh, Jason did a funny." Well, Jason said a funny. Like. Hey. I found that very just so we're not allowed to be funny once you get over the age of 30 is, is that the cut off point I just found it very strange that's why it's uh, <laughs> I'm still angry I should let it go I really should let it go but being so angry oh so yeah i there was another was it years oh another similar thing when i was at churchill so i was only 30 32 myself and this like 19 or 20 year old was working again in my team and it's at the end of the shift and i pulled my phone out i think she said have you got a phone i said yeah so I pulled my phone out and said, oh, I thought you'd have a really old-fashioned one and a really, like, big, chunky thing. It's like, why? Why would I have a, you know, it's like, she thought I'd have, a like, a really crap phone because she had a good phone. It's like, well, I'm earning twice as much as you. I can afford a phone. Which was a fact because I was <laughs> I was earning twice as much as that, not not salary, but like with bonus, because I was the king. I wasn't, but it wasn't about money. It's like it wasn't. It was just a contract phone. It wasn't expensive. But the idea that like because I was so old, 
I was thirty-two. So old. How, how could I have an up-to-date phone? Wow. It's like people expected me to be walking around with a Nokia 10. Now. You know, it's like... Uh, anyway, I had a flip phone. I loved that little phone. I had a few phones. got my first phone... 98 I was a little bit a little bit slow to the a little bit slow to the well on that one but I I got it yeah 98 I didn't want a phone it might have been late 97 but I'm thinking it was early yeah it might have been late 97 sort of like November time December or something and it wasn't a contract, it was just pay pay as you go. And it had this little aerial, and I used to like to pull it out of my teeth and just let it swing from my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's just something that I used to like do, and then just spin it around like a helicopter. Kind of, except the helicopter. It would be, it would be like a helicopter, but reverse, with the actual body of the helicopter spinning around instead of the propeller so it's nothing like a helicopter but I enjoyed doing it one of my favourite phones was a flip phone uh, I've had a couple of flip phones I had one Ericsson this was back in you know what yeah my first flip phone Probably two thousand no nineteen maybe ninety nine and I got an Ericsson. Ericsson's were really popular back then. And it was like a, almost like a, a kind of Star Trek hand transporter talk thing. Every now and then I'll just like open up and say, beat me up. When there was no one around. Because see, I enjoyed doing it. Oh, look at this. In the Brown stuff. Filming for the Mrs. Brown's Boys Christmas special was halted so the BBC could investigate offensive remarks made during filming. About time too. Every. St oh, blimey. This is a bit over the top. The ward on the street. Who is this bloke? I don't know. It's not even saying what his, what his name is. The ward on the street. I went to buy a Dracula costume for Halloween. But when the shop assistant brought out a Manchester United football shirt. I said. You must have misheard me. I said I want to look like a count. See. This. That is a good joke in a sense of, you know, an anti-Manchester United fan. And that's a better dad's joke because it's, you know, it's humorous. So this bloke decides that every episode is so unfunny it offends me deeply. I can only hope that this will be the final now in his coffin and it will... Oh dear. The thing is, it's actually quite a feel good show, I think. And I don't know why, what all the uh, thing is. I don't know what they said. Well, look, Bruce Young. So Bruce. Bruce Springsteen says. Uh, oh, I can't. Bruce Springsteen says the music industry puts enormous pressures on young people. Um, young people don't have the inner facility or the inner self yet to be able to protect themselves from a lot of things that come with success and fame. But Bruce did. Why are you assuming that other people don't? You did, Brucey baby. So it seems a little bit, uh, it's the word condescending to think that he was okay, he could deal with success. But no one else can. 
I, I agree. It's, it was different back then, though, wasn't it? There was no internet. So when he started out, it was, what, the 60s, 70s? Probably 70s. So he... Maybe he was around... Yeah, he was, I mean, he was definitely born in the 60s. He was around in the 60s. So he's 71 now. I don't know. There was no internet... But people still got harassed. There was no internet when Mel Marilyn Monroe was around. But she was still affected by all of the tabloid press and the intrusion, wasn't she? There was no internet as such with uh, Princess Diana. I mean, there was internet, but it was very... No, there wasn't. No, internet wasn't really a big thing here back then. It was around, but it was just kind of in its infancy. Um, so, yeah, the internet hasn't been around forever. But famous people being hassled and maybe struggling has been around forever. As long as famous people have been around. I kind of get what you're saying, but, yeah. Linda from Birds of Feather says I defend right to offend oh I'm sorry that was out loud Rihanna Sugden shows off her new shorter hair the model 38 shared the saucy snap with her hordes of admirers who is Rihanna Sugden once she slipped on uh, Na 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 Batman or something. This is when I just um, I don't know who she is. Rihanna Sugden. Rianne Sugden, rather not Rihanna. Rianne Sugden. Who is Rianne Sugden? I've got no idea. If I look, if I look for long enough, maybe I'll realise who she is. No, still don't know who she is. Still don't recognise her at all. I'm looking at her, but I can't not place her anywhere. Okay, now look at her face, see if that helps. <laughs> uh, almost once in every five years. Oh, wow, this is an interesting p thing. So this is Farts and Furious. That's the headline. This What is paper is this? The Daily Star on Sunday. Almost one in every five couples have weaponized farting during rows. Wow. A shocking 19% said they let rip at home to show displeasure or wind up in their fair. What? Or, or, okay, displeasure or wind up their partner. Don't use the word wind when you're talking about wind because it gets confusing. Men are more likely to let off than women during a row. Do people really... F <laughs> Do people really fart during an argument? Do they? They really blow off. To, that's what it used to be called, blowing off. Do people really blow off during a row? I've never... didn't. I did not know that. I mean, I don't really have arguments, but I did not know that. So men are more likely to let off than women during it <laughs> than, are, than women. With 14% of them owning up compared to 5% of women. And people from Manchester do it the most. How would they... How... What a... It, <laughs> where's the study for this? Where is the study? Oh, here it is. Bingo site, whichbingo.co.uk, not an advert, of course, asked 2,000 UK adults if they fart in front of their partner. <laughs> Why? You're a weird, weird story. <sighs> to come up with the findings, the site spokesman, Charlie Shakespeare, said of the study... Our research shows that couples are letting rip at the drop of a hat. He went on, whether they do it to be 
uh, to be annoying, to be rude, or even to break the ice after a row. Letting off seems to be something people do to communicate their moods, bad or good. Older couples fart the most in front of their partners, <laughs> with 25% of those aged 59 doing it. Wow. Is this true? I don't know. Is this new to me? New to me? Let's have a little look at um, Suggs Jugs. I'm um, Rianne Sugden. No. Um, I don't know. Where, where, I don't recognise her. Has she been on a TV show? I'm really not sure. Mm. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so uh, where else? Welcome to Fitzka, not bad. Okay, here's James Kabuta's Wired Weekend. So, this is like a showbiz thing. Her last album was all about her romance with Ben Affleck, so it's no surprise Jennifer Lopez is keen to move on and quick. I thought they were back together. J-Lo is dropping a bold new pop sound following their split and has reached out to songwriters hoping for a hit. Forget movies, J-Lo in set needs a new banger. I thought they were back together. Oh, I'm so, so devastated. Stars collab saves the day. Oh, I can't even bother to read that. Um, with winged, winged star Megan, a high flyer. Perhaps Megan Three Stallion. What? Megan the Stallion should be the butterfly judged by her metamorphosis. The rapper confirms a new chapter of her music career dubbed Act 2 will arrive next week just months after the release of her first self-titled album the Houston hottie <laughs> shares a shot in a white bodysuit at butterfly wings open behind her for what is expected to be a whole new sound oh I can't wait Um, don't know who she is I'm so out of date I did not know this. They come from different pop generations, but Mabel and Nina Cherry could not be closer. The mother-daughter chart stars are inseparable. Mabel said, Mabel said, we love to cook together, shopping, been watching TV. Wow. I did not know that Mabel... Was Nina Cherry's uh, daughter. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Did not. I do now. Now all I've got to do is figure out who Mabel is. A hip remixer from Kent to Dad. Aussie sounds like a different uh, brat. Gary Barlow. There was um, a housemate in the Big Brother house. He looked just like Gary, Gary Barlow. Serious. No one mentioned it. No one even brought it up. It's like, how could you not see Gary Bar a young Gary Barlow standing there? It's like, if you just start singing, then everyone would like click, but no. Then my friend said, but it's not actually Gar Gary Barlow, is it? I said, what do you mean? She said, well, if it was Gary Barlow, he started singing, people would say, oh, it's Gary Barlow. But he's not going to start singing because he isn't Gary Barlow. Unless he starts singing a different song. I said, no, but he could still sing a Gary Barlow song. Do you mean to take that song? Or, or, or a Gary Barlow song? But take that would be more likely. Now, Gary Barlow has had, you know, singles on his own in albums. He's written music and released songs as a like a solo artist name one 
Name one song. Just one. Name one song. Go on. Name one. Name one. Name one. Okay, I can't. So it'd be a take that song. Yeah, that would make sense, I guess. Okay. But he didn't. Garibola got nostalgic for vinyl after revisiting Take That's Everything Changes LP. A special edition of it was created for yesterday's National Album Day and Barlow said, We used to be able to have great fun with product. What? We used to be able to have great fun with product. It was something you used to treasure and collect, making the sleeves fold out posters different vinyl color vinyl so it was great fun to be able to do that this year i think it's the perfect product the first bit doesn't make sense though we used to be able to have great fun with product with the product maybe <laughs> Everyone is going country these days, even Ringo Starr, the Beatles legend. Do they need to mention Beatles at this point? Everyone, anyone that knows who he is, knows he was in the Beatles. And anyone who doesn't know who he is, is not going to be interested in reading about him. That's my theory. It's like you don't have to say Paul McCartney, former Beatle. It's Paul McCartney. If you're going to put bra brackets, you know, one of the most famous musicians in the world. But anyone that doesn't know who Paul McCartney is, I mean, is, are people going to think, oh, the Beatles, who are they? I've just mentioned the bit. I've heard the beat. I'm going to have to check them out. You know, there are probably people who don't know who the Beatles are. I'm talking like human level, maybe even adults. It's hard to, to, to imagine in my head that there would be people who don't know who Elvis Presley is, but there are. It's just there's certain people that eclipse music. Michael Jackson, the Beatles, Elvis Presley, Whitney Houston, Madonna, um, Prince. You know, there's these artists that were just absolute megastars. I mean, the Beatles... And Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson pretty much at the top of the list, I would say. I mean, the Beatles, no one released as many, no one had as many top 10 hits as the Beatles. No one. I don't think any single solo artist has been as successful as Elvis. I mean, very solemn right now, aren't I? It's a very solemn conversation. But then I'm thinking, you know, back in the day, you know, I'm talking like 60s, 50s, even, like 1956, 57, when Elvis was first kind of rising, or was it 54? I don't know, but it was, I think it was about, it was like middle 50s or whatever. I think it was 57. Anyway, he... Imagine there was a lot of people that didn't care for him. wasn't Weren't interested. He was a very controversial figure for a while. And... There probably a whole generation of older people... Maybe in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. They were completely clueless to who he was. Didn't know who he was. And lived their whole life without ever being interested or caring. They may have heard his name, but that was it. 
because it was mainly the young kids, the teenagers that fell for him. And then I think his audience grew up with him. I mean, I love him. I love Elvis Presley. I will always love Elvis Presley. Always. I will. I just can't help it. I love, love his voice, love his songs, everything about Elvis. I love the Beatles. But I like lots of things. I'm very... I am quite eclectic, really. I like different things. I can... Sometimes I like to listen to stuff that I've never heard before. Ooh, Del Boy was not dodgy. Well, you know what? He was. Del Boy was not dodgy. Now, Do Del, Del Boy, only fools and horses, funny character, legend on TV. But he was dodgy in the show. Hearts in the right place, yeah. But only when it came to his brother or his family, his heart wasn't in the right place when it came to any of his friends. He would sell someone a car with no brakes. How is that not dodgy? And he did that in one of the shows. Sold a bloke a car with no brakes. I mean, if you did that today, you'd go to prison for a long time for doing that if they ended up having an accident. So... The character was dodgy, but the character was also funny. But I'd say a little bit heartless at times. Dodgy as anything. The two dodgiest characters, basically, Arthur Daly and uh, Del Boy. Both dodgy in their own way, and they should have got together and done a special. Like a one-off special, the two of them together just meeting the two, like Minder and Only Fools and Horses, meeting, it would have been so good. If it had been written properly, it would have been like a real special event. Because they'd just be trying to rip each other off. And you had, you'd have uh, Terry McCann would be trying to get in the middle, trying to, like, trying to sort it out, and Rodney would be like divering around and everything, and you see Rodney trying to act tough as well when they first meet. When he first meets uh, Terry, saying, oh, "I'm I'm Del Boy's, <laughs> I'm Del Boy's um, bouncer." Ah, oh, dear, that'd be funny. It was a brilliant character, brilliant show. I love it, but he was dodgy. You can't argue that one. It was he was a dodgy. And if you call someone Del Boy, as that is a term for being dodgy. Because they would sell you. I, even my friend, someone I cared about, he, I told him I had something that didn't work. And he said, oh, let's try and sell it on the market. I said, it doesn't work. He said, so? I said, it doesn't work. I'm not going to sell it to someone for them to go home. and, and like, Even if it's only 20 quid... It's just wrong. Oh, it don't matter. No, it does matter. <laughs> it's like, no. Uh, John Lennon's first... Oh, John Lennon's another one. John Lennon's first Vox Amp is expected to fetch around 200 grand at auction. The 1962 model was used on stage. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 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 uh. Right. See, this is quite. A, this has been a lot easier on my emotions. This this newspaper, because they're not talking so much about some of the other stuff in the world. It's just a little bit. Insomniac, insomniac. What the hell is that? Insomniac has confirmed Marvel Spider Man two. Gets no additional story content. I don't know what that's about. It takes two studio Hazel Lights. Started teasing a new co-op game. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know. That all makes James. Oh, it's games about games. Okay, here's we go. Gardening. We can skip that. 
I was going to come through. I wanted to see. Um, the what's it? Didn't I? Uh, where is it? I wanted to see my star signs. Where's my star signs? Da 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 da. Is it weird how you almost know that, you know, when like a, a big celebrity leaves the planet and they're all like, oh, you know, newspapers are being all kind and respectful. You know that within a week or two, they'll be dishing the dirt. They'll start going into like, what was that person really like? They were the opposite with uh, Princess Diana. This, there's no, there's no, there's no star sign. I can't believe that. That has ruined my life. Where's the star sign? There's no star sign. Sport, and this is sport. No, it's sports was at the back. Sport. Oh, blimey, really? They're really pushing out this story. Okay. No star sign. All I ever wanted was a star sign. Is that too... Oh, no, 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 there is. It's at the back. It's at the right at the back. Word search. No, not word search. Star mm -hmm. sign. No, not puzzle planet. Puzzle planet. Puzzle planet. Puzzle planet. No. Puzzle planet. Puzzle planet. No, no, star sign, oh, yep, no, soap stars, TV, God, there's a lot of stuff in there, oh, got it, I found it, with Russell Grant, and there's a picture of him from 30 years ago, Russell Grant, Virgo, right, you are going to have to rely on your problem solving skills when a project runs into difficulties. Quitting is not the solution, but you may need to invest a huge amount of time into this venture. That's annoying because that actually is um, <laughs> quite on the ball. About, let's have a look, see what other newspapers might have the star sign. So we've done the mail, the star sign. I'm going to skip, I'm going to do the mirror and I'm going to skip straight through to the star signs. Straight through. All right, come on. Load up, please. Load up. Load up. Load up. Ooh. Load up. Mac. Okay. Come on, come on. Star sign. Star sign. Star sign. St come on. Oh, got it. No, music. Oedipus. Star sign with Russell Grant. This is a different newspaper. This is the Sunday Mirror. Okay, Virgo. Is this the right day? Sunday the Sunday the twentieth. Twentieth. Okay. You always knew that you would stand out in a group. You are joining, but you are still joining, full of hope that you will be welcomed. What you will not have been expecting is how quickly you will be. T taking on a prominent position your skills are appreciated and respected by others the same person who did the last one but it's a different horoscope that doesn't seem right uh. 
Well, let's have a look what the next one is. That was a Sunday mirror. Let's do the Sunday people read. Okay. I mean, some of these newspapers are owned by the same companies, the same newspaper place. Oh, is this the same one? I've already done this one. I've done the mirror. Yeah, I think I have. I don't know, they're all starting to look the same to me. All starting to look the same. Where's... Really? Yeah, wow. This really is... It's like they've just got the same newspaper, just changed it around a little bit. Wow, a lot of shoe adverts. I'm not complaining because I love shoes. Ooh. Um, star signs, star signs, star signs. Wow. You are going to have to rely on your problem solving skills when a project runs into difficulties. Quitting is not a solution, but you may need to invest a huge amount of time and effort into this venture. Now, that is something I've already done before. So, I've done the star, I've done the mirror, I've done the people. Okay. So, Sunday Express, does that have a... Does that have an, a thing? A star science? It might have. You never know. It's a little bit more upmarket. But. We'll see. We will see. Let's have a look. Oh. Emily attack. Uh. It's weird. She was in a, the in the between us, but she wasn't like one of the main characters. But she was a girlfriend of, what well, kind of a, a semi girlfriend of one of the stars. But she's got on to be quite a bit of a star. After that, in more recent years. Na, 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 na. Gladiator 2. I wonder what Gladiator 2 will be like. I wonder if there's any point to it. It might be really good. It looks to me like there might be a star sign in this one. Because it's very similar to some of the other ones. It looks like there might well be. Let's have a look. I'd like to be a star sign person. Just, I think it'd be fun. I think this is very sad. Um, on sale now. Also available from Amazon, WH Smith and local news agents. They put together a unique tribute to a modern pop icon. Six pound ninety nine glossy mag. It's been like three days. Come on, people. Four days, three, four days. I mean, now they're trying to make money off of it. Oh dear. If it was four ninety nine. Oh, come on, oh, where, where is it? Come on, you can... Where's the star signs? The star signs? Where are you hiding? No, I've got to the end of it, so I need to go back. There has to be some star signs. This is ridiculous. I mean, there's nothing more important in a newspaper than star signs. We all know that. Why are we pretending otherwise? Where are you... 
Star signs, I miss you. I can't find it. Nope, no star signs. That's very, very disappointing. I don't think I've ever been so disappointed in my life. Oh, now it's got it here saying, Jane Simmons discovers that pounding the pavements could be doing your health more harm than good with air pollution. In oh. So they're saying jogging is bad for you. Exercise is bad for you. Oh, shush, shush. I mean, I personally wouldn't jog in a place where there's lots of cars. Not because of the pollution. I just I don't, I don't want to distract the drivers with my sexy legs. My pert bum wobbling around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't see. I can't find nothing. I can't find out. Never mind. I think I've probably covered enough. I don't think there's any other ever star signs. Unless, 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 unless. Wales on Sunday. Let's see if they've got a star sign. Is there star, star signs? Who's that? Man wrongly accused. Okay. Just going to go through this. The Wales on Sunday. Don't know where that's based. Metal, metal defector. Park thing right and I said. Okay, right. So. Ooh. Ooh. Me, 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 me. Where is it? Come on. Where's the star size? Oh. Russell Grant. Russell Grant again. Right, so I've read already read two of his. This is the third the third one he's been in. So let's have a Virgo. You always knew that you would stand out in a group. You are joining, but you are still joining full of hope that you will be welcomed. What you will not have been expecting is how quickly you'll be taken on a prominent position. Your skills are appreciated and respected by others. Admittedly, it's a little bit similar to the other one because he did talk about joining a group and not sure if I'd be, a, you know, welcome or I feel welcome. Now it's saying I will do. It's also saying for more information, call 0905 789 4276. Only 80 pence a minute. Oh. Da 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 da. If you're Aries, that's good. There's plenty of enjoyment and relaxation to be found in most areas of your life right now. If you're feeling pressure at work, things are starting to get e easier. Your friendships are a source of happiness and there is a less tension in family relationships. Cool. That was someone else's though, so it's not mine. I wonder if there's any other... Any other no I think I've covered all the Sunday papers unless unless do they have national new papers on Sunday the people the mirror Sunday Express what about America search and category newspapers but surely USA newspapers. Actually, no, if I go back to local newspapers, cancel newspapers, but then you've got region by region. So let's look at Midlands. 
the Sunday Mercury. Okay, let's have a look at the Sunday Mercury in the Midlands. And let's find out. There's this... Uh, you know, it's mugshots for, like, people that are being put in prison and stuff. Rarely smile, do they? I guess it's always... Do you think they're not allowed to smile? A bit like with passport photographs. You're not allowed to smile in those, are we? Do you know it's like, no, we're going to keep doing it until you frown. I did see one, though. Some bloke, I don't know what he was arrested for, but he was gleaming, like, absolutely very happy with himself. <laughs> it was just... Because they use those photographs if someone goes missing, don't they? Like if they if they kind of escape, I just thought how funny if they put his picture on there, like looking for this person. Harris adds heavyweight name to Bill. Some serious beef has been added to the Unleashed show at Best Scott Stadium on November the sixteenth. Big hitting heavyweight Matty Harris. A Coventry Colossus who work, he stands six foot eight inches tall, is one of the two top contenders who have been included in the stacked Sadler's Bill. The 24 year old signed to promotion powerhouse Wasserman Boxing has bounced back from his first career loss with back to back wins against Amin Bocetta and Yuri. What did he. He did lose. Who did he lose to? I can't remember. Matty Harris. I'm going to have to check this. I'm going to have to check. It might have been a points thing. Because when boxers first start their professional career, they, let's say some boxers are, they're not, they're just like learning how to the trade like as far as professional because it's supposed to be very different from amateur and also not all boxers are like you know quick to get started um, for example some some boxers get outboxed for the first few rounds not in every one of their fights uh, Tank Davis I'd say even Canelo probably gets outboxed in the first few rounds of his fights. So if that was their first fight, when Canelo fought pretty much anyone of his last four or five fights, he would have lost that fight if it was a four-round fight. Now, undoubtedly, he wouldn't have fought like that if it was a four-round fight, but because the bloke's boxing genius, pretty much. Virgo, so this is... The Mer Sunday Mercury. You always knew that you would stand out in a group you are joining, but you are still joining full of hope that you will be welcomed. Okay, so it's basically exactly the same as the other one. Um, okay, Matty Harris. So I need to check that. Matty Harris. Matty Harris. Matty Harris. Matty Harris. Oh, that's weird. Matty Harris. That's very strange. Let's have a look. Boxrec.com. Okay. He did, 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 did. He lost. He got knocked out. He got knocked out by... According to this, okay, I'm not going to say this is a vertebrae, vertebraeum or whatever. He got beaten by Konstantin Dovbyskensko in June last year. I vaguely remember that. Oh, 
Wow. But Dow B. Shensko down from a right in the second round as well. So it's kind of back and forth. But Matty Harris got knocked out. Wow. That's quite unusual for a young fighter, especially heavyweights. One, two, three, four, five, six. It was only a six fight. One, two, three, four, five. It was a sixth fight. So that's very unusual that that happened. It doesn't. Ha I mean, yeah, it's just quite quite unusual actually. Blimey, I'm gonna have to check that out. I don't really know much about what happened there. My insights. What is it? Uh, just have a look at the stats for today so far. Oh, that's all right. Let's go out of there, go into the other one. Sign in to that one. It's three minutes past ten o'clock. Yeah, it's not, not been super... Super busy on the old uh, podcast today. It is a Sunday though, so that's kind of expected. It's a Sunday's always a little bit slower. Well, not always, just sometimes. So I'm getting, yeah, it's quite. It's up till seven o'clock, and I've had, I've had three thousand and five plays so far today so yeah it's uh it's quite weird because a week ago was that sunday saturday friday thursday wednesday tuesday monday monday nine thousand four hundred tuesday eight thousand three hundred thirty two wednesday six thousand eight hundred twenty three Thursday, 7,001. Friday, 3,579. So this has gone down. <laughs> it's gone down. Uh, Saturday, 3,889. Sunday, 3,005. It's gone downhill. I hope it picks up again tomorrow. Otherwise, I'd be concerned about my career. <laughs> career oh dear so this is probably the end of this here recording so I'm going to go thank you ever so much for listening and let's have a look yeah so thank you for listening please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. It's weird the door just clicked for some reason. That's strange. Ah. You right, baby? You right, darling? You right, baby boy? Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also, I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation 
continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again. And it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found Being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. It 
knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade maybe not solidly obviously not 24 hours a day but maybe people come back some people maybe listen every day And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. And if I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now and as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep.
without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Was it snoring or was a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field 
of trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just take in some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down.
is nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. being released from your brain and your mind Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists
muscles in the front of your body. So feeling peaceful. a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind. Your mind becomes even slower. Very slow. Your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel.
spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. all the way to your lower back. Just wandering away.
happy to let go. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more. Joy. The space. This space. Of peace. And safety.
Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. in a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Go. body
body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling, positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort.
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing As I move down your body, starting at your head, the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth, relaxing, calm and loose, as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. experience in the back of your neck, moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan Gently 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread in your lower back to your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. As you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. They're already feeling muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message
into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So, so calm. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread same time so light and gentle Focusing now on your hands, sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
muscles and your thighs. Your knees. So relaxed. muscles and your shins completely
start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
15. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. Focusing just on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that in on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one, right now, ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, will you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs? Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down or just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice that that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realize how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and the calf muscles, and the bones between your knees and your feet. Incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. And then you want this head, even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle, knows how, how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime helps us to balance helps you to get around and be mobile the calf muscles of course <laughs> when I was younger I couldn't see the point in calf muscles they didn't seem to do anything I'm like okay if I walked around on tiptoes then my calf muscles get some work but of course that's not true the calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs your shins there to protect your lower legs shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs and I realize now that I've mentioned your feet you're probably focusing on them anyway so maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit you can have them in your awareness the same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. There's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. Massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee. You know the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. as you go down to your calf muscles now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles massaging every single tissue of that muscle healing every part The same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. Now when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. Sound a bit, a bit silly to start with the 
idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, it is so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight, these little ankles. than eight stone, double that, yet my ankles support my body all the time, although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down, as in fact my whole legs do, my feet also go and my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. 
and the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, is still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is a tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice that the 
the sun thoughts still there? Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. thoughts, sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven.
Imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. to focus on your hands, because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. on your hands and your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers. Allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one. You can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands.
Tiens, on est où Non, on n'est pas. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things about stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. take that away, which is what we do, what we do now, you're left with a real 
sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling a feeling you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe 
the things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose. To enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. And of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because for sleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally you were born to just drift off into a deep healing sleep even when we're kids sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to we try to <laughs> stay awake Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. sometimes as we get older in life perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience it's also really easy it's very very easy to let go because that's all it is it's just deciding you pray 
press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind as you more relax. And it's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. Negativity will disappear. And as 
you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. doesn't it, to just to let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. For now, twenty.
this is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, we expect when we listen to our voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. your organs and 
coração aqui agora. Ele não tem mais seus Rules of Thumbs. Or African every hand in your body is filled with that healing energy. And then your brain fills relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that your mind starts feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed you're not in those stands to be relaxed what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is a full sleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission to your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on different parts of your body. that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep. And that's the last you remember 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you can move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Focus on both of your hands now, and you may seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing elbows, focusing on both of your elbows, 
letting go. start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness, because I'm a professional, and this is a therapy session, so none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and with my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now I'll put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe. And it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. Now 
this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that will lead to the shoulders and the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders moving to the muscles of your shoulders And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get in 
into those muscles and let your fingers in there and feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial for the relaxation. the muscles in your shoulders. And now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you, I want it to be attached, and I just massage the tops of your arms, all the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm. leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. your right hand, just holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. same time, pressing down and massaging each finger, and then starting to massage the palms of your hands, just turning the hand gently stretching it gently, and actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles 
you are way down to your wrist. Stroke of the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers. Massaging the palm of your left hand. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again with a really big beam top and between your shoulders and then your neck going back massaging that area again but this time moving downwards making a downward stroke to the middle of your back working from the outside Massaging the your back, but the the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down firmly but gently, as firm as you want. a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down. do that a few times. Sometimes people choose the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. You can almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension opening up the body, stretching your body, so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move to 
from one side to the right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side, to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part where you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back, kneading and massaging from the sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. But it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. there's that feeling from your stomach which has been stretched even though you're in your stomach now you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach now we're going to move or move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same, this time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area of muscle tissue whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest feels all connected your chest and your back connect together and you're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move 
down a bit and I continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I move with the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from you. Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging the calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your, back of your ankles. Just gently massaging that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough so you don't tickle, and just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, your sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually.
you move him over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting from the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, working down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching the toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure, of release that you experience from having your feet massaged, feels Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently, starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed, and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. Massaging around your scalp, massaging down the cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently, the sides of your neck. chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone, and you 
just let's imagine the whole of the chest. Chest around it feels quite a large area you can move from one side to the next moving the head underneath pretty much where your arms are some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And moving down again. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually the hands moving apart, massaging and sliding at the same time. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. It feels really good in its massage. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, and just below your arms all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free. And there's something about having your stomach massaged it's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach. Circles around the belly button. And going the other way around. And with gentleness. 
loss or freedom that comes from feeling and with being. As I now move down the tops of the thighs, the muscles massaging them, I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in the thighs, in front of the thighs. Gently massaging the knees. Sliding down the shins. Putting pressure on either side of your shin. Gently. Softly and firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot and each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy. So many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling. Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles and rewind. So we're going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down, all the way down to one, and each time I say a number. Imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically <laughs> gently blow that candle out. Just this is not a big blow, it's just 
is a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I say the next number as we move down and you can just yourself feeling more and more relaxed and you moved to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds for the moment you can remain start to just not even notice them at all because they're But the sounds of the birds as Hollis the pigeon who likes to say hello sometimes and as the little plane goes by with the traffic and trains in the distance seems important whatsoever. Seem to no 
Sensing it. So simple. And we're going to start by introducing the first Activity growing within you. Relaxation, sleepiness, expanding.
Ds and A's. It can be seven to seven.
all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace. That we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. It's because you've chosen. You've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you chosen to decide to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. do give your permission and you give the say so you can say okay it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows just allow the breath of relief the end of a day, a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour. Feels blissful. And just by sitting there like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind will prepare. to evaporate and the tensions can just gradually
Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go and be with your own and relax and see more and more salient. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself. almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button and all the tension just releases it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of the clock just unwinding and you just almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way of the EG to be winded up. All the energy, that frenetic stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you re-energize and listen to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when we're stressed we're not actually doing a real reflecting thing. It is physically or emotionally mind in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all that you do now need to drop onto the floor. You can start to get in touch with the feelings of 
skin focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from the discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, and notice to be in touch with how you actually feel in the 
expand. And we'll start off by focusing on the animals. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. And then turning your ankles, moving your feet around, making a turn gently. And when you very gently Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscles Really get in touch with the inner aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. Like you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation. Looking up, maybe you're 
Give it your blanket. 
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower movements, which are always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. What happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings of just thinking and thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings and those different muscles and the skin the hairs of your arms the near the internal parts of your arms the veins Just 
being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain fever maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm on your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just fever and it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing or signal and when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit like you tense the muscles gently Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back. Your pulse that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently. seem to happen the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back and there's a lot of that feel chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now of the 
chest. You see there's the collarbone leading to a chest. There's a chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course with the female there's possibly the breasts. If you're male you've got the different well mine aren't that different these days but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest but at the side and underneath pretty much the same whether you're a man or a woman there's muscles there muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is chest. Do I notice that I focus on my chest? I feel it in my my back, my upper back. Guess the obvious reason would be because of my breathing. But you know, when it stretches my chest and my back at the same time, then it feels it feels okay. bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also working to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas. Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or squiggle out the various muscles in your body. To get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes. Doing it because of, I don't know, she 
to be prepared to fight everybody. You need to be gentle with yourself. started this recording. nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is your intention at the very least for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow down. To your body body. Maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom. You know, start maybe to Things that are <laughs> far away from a spaceship. So slow. And continue. 
Thank you. 